Hey there dirt bike people, I'm Chuck from True Tech and today we're gonna blow some dents out of my pipe. My pipe has received a beating over the last few years but the last time I was riding, I was riding in a particularly rocky area and I put this one in there so I figured why not blow out the dents and make it look a little prettier. I did a short about blowing out pipe dents a little while ago. It certainly confirmed what I suspected and that's a lot of people are pretty intimidated by the idea of blowing out their pipe dents. They think that the pipe is gonna explode or that stuff is gonna go flying or that as you heat it up, the metal is going to suddenly become molten and lava is gonna spray all over the shop. All kinds of misconceptions. It's really very simple. I've been doing it for years. I'll show you exactly how I do it. So I'm gonna use air pressure. There are other ways of doing it, primarily the Hydroforce. The Hydroforce is a super cool tool, but it doesn't work on these stock KTM pipes because they have ridges like this. The Hydroforce pushes the ridges out with so much force that it actually distorts the pipe. It wants all these ridges to go straight. We can't have that. So we're gonna use the other way, that's with air pressure and heat. Basically, we just have to stop up the ends of the pipe so that we can put a little bit of air pressure in and then we can add some heat and it works really, really well. There are lots of kits that you can buy online. I'm not affiliated with any of them, so I don't have any links or anything like that. Just Google it, you'll find it. I made mine myself. I've actually updated it some over the years. I have this for the small end. So what I do is I just slide this over the small end like that. Over the years, I've built some adapters like this for different size pipes. So between this and these two, it'll do pretty much any two-stroke pipe. I just take this, tighten it up, and that's not gonna go anywhere. Now I just take some rubber from a tube, put it over top. Then I have this plate. This plate just bolts onto here. I got two bolts. I just slide this piece of rubber in between there, tighten her down. Simple as that. Then for the other side, I've got this bigger plate and it's got a valve stem in it. And then I have this, it just goes like that. And I've got a piece of rubber with a hole in it. It's really not rocket surgery. Put that plate over like that. And that's all there is to it. Now I'm gonna put some air in and it's gonna leak and then I'm gonna adjust it. It's not really leaking. Okay, well. I guess I got everything adjusted just right. Oftentimes you gotta tweak these a little bit so that it doesn't leak. So I'm just gonna check the pressure. I like to go with about 40 pounds. Maybe that's why it's not leaking. I'm only at 13. 30. At this point, I do like to put my safety glasses on. Now the pressure in here is gonna go up as I heat it. Yeah, we're 40 pounds there. Let's start with some of these ones here. I just use a regular old propane torch. I know that there are better ways of doing it. I've done it with map gas before. I haven't really noticed a difference. Cool, all right, this happens sometimes. Right there, I have a little pinhole and that pinhole is actually in the weld. So actually this is a good thing to make a little note of. I've got 40 PSI in that pipe and that pinhole, I was actually looking at it before it popped and it looked like it was a hole, but I was holding 40 PSI. So I guess it was just the carbon inside the pipe was holding that pressure in. And when I heated it up, it popped out and that's all that happened. I am not a welder. My shop is not set up for welding. This is how I weld. Perfect. Now back up to pressure. My ugly little weld. Don't judge me, I'm not a welder. I fix dirt bikes. So let's talk about this for a little bit. So I'm using my hammer. There was quite a sharp dent over here. 
So I just tapped around the edges of it with my hammer. That often helps to get a little bit smoother result. I'm not concerned about aesthetics. This is a practical fix. I just don't want my pipe to be all smashed up. I'm gonna increase the pressure here to 80 PSI and see if I can get that sharp dent out. Those sharp ones are the worst. Of course, I had to weld right where that dent was. So that's gonna limit what I'm able to do with that dent right there, but I'll see what I can do. This one here, this one's gonna come out real nice. I'll do that one right now. See, those ones there are super easy. It was a nice kind of gradual dent. Those are a joke. Let's see if we can increase the pressure here a bit. See what I can do with that sharp dent. That'll be a tough one. So we're about 80 PSI there. See what we can do. Okay, so that's a that's a big improvement. Like I say, because I had to weld right there, it's that weld is actually keeping it from coming back out. That's okay. <laughs> the dent's maybe like an eighth of an inch deep right now. That is totally fine with me. Now we got another one over here. I'll just give it that some heat. That's looking pretty good. Oh, looks like my weld has sprung a little bit of a leak. That's no surprise. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure if it's leaking. It's smoking anyway. I wouldn't be surprised if it did leak because all that movement in this area. Oh yeah, I can see a little bubble there. All that movement in this area is going to have compromised that weld a little bit. Doesn't matter. If I wasn't blowing out the dents, I wouldn't worry about the little hole. It's not going to affect anything. Like I say, this is not about aesthetics. I guess mainly what I'm doing is just maintaining the shape of my pipe. If I do this periodically, then my pipe will last a long time. Basically, if I get ahead of the pipe as it gets bent and contorted and turned into a shape which doesn't fit on the bike anymore, if I just keep kind of tweaking it and maintaining it, I'm gonna get a lot more life out of my pipe. Now, I'm gonna go outside and let the pressure out of this thing because, man, you do it in the shop and it stinks for three days. Now, when I did that short uh, a few days ago, one of the questions that Actually, there's a few questions that came up. A few people commented about annealing the pipe or changing the properties, especially of the stainless. Well, these are plated pipes, so I'm not worried about changing the properties or causing rust or anything like that. The pipe's gonna rust, I don't care. I don't care if I anneal it, I don't care if it goes soft or hard or brittle, it doesn't matter. Pipes get banged up all the time. It's part of owning a two-stroke and riding enduro especially. Even motocross, pipes are gonna get banged up. This is just a regular part of doing maintenance on your two-stroke. As I said, I wanna get as much life out of my pipe as I can, and if you can do this at home, it's gonna save you a bunch of money in the long run. So 40 PSI, that's another question. How much pressure, how much pressure? Okay, 40 PSI, that's what I started with. I went up to 80 and I did get that really sharp dent a little bit better, but it's pretty rare that I do that. I usually just stick to 40. As you heat up the pipe, the pressure is going to increase. Sometimes I see 50, sometimes I see 60. It's okay, I've seen over 100, I'm not worried. Now, what about the finished result? The finished result is not pretty. After you heat up a pipe to orange like that, it's gonna leave circles and you can brush them or kind of like polish them and they look a little better, but the pipe's never gonna be what it was when it was new. Pipes get banged up. If you're looking for a pretty pipe, sorry, go buy a new one. Use a little bit of common sense. You know, I don't stand directly in front of where the end caps are usually, I try not to. My system of capping the ends has evolved over the years and I used to have more kind of janky plugs for the end. So what I did in that case is I used some safety wire and I made a little tether and the tether was about a foot long or so. The few times that I did have it blow off, the tether would just catch it because as soon as the plug leaves the pipe, you know that it's lost all of its force. It doesn't want to go any further. So the tether will catch it. If you have any more questions, throw them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. If you like this type of video, I'd appreciate if you let the algorithm know. If you wanna see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you wanna see what I'm doing on a more day-to-day -day basis, you can find that content on Instagram. Thanks a lot for watching.